Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday, and tonight we're opening this cello box of 1981 tops. It is a baseball card exchange authenticated box, as you can see by the wrapping. Um, there are 24 packs in this box. As you know, the cello packs have more cards per pack than the wax packs. We'll be checking those out shortly. Just showing you all the sides of the box. Topps baseball cards, the favorite of kids year after year. Um, basically because that was the only choice they had back then. Well, in 81, that kind of changed the landscape of the baseball card industry with Don Ross and also Fleer coming into the marketplace. Here's the bottom of the box. You can see that it was authenticated by Steve Hart, the owner. Uh, 1981 Topps baseball cello box with the hologram there. So without further ado, we're going to open this box up and see what we find um, in this 38-year-old box. So I'm going to try to just do a nice little slit here, try to keep the box from any damage. And by the way, we have some sponsors. All these packs in here are spoken for. We're just gonna open them up from top to bottom, left to right. So it's gonna be pack one, two, three, and so on, just as if we were reading a book. So uh, with solo packs, they're always easy to search just for the top and bottom card, because you could see those. Um, I always felt like solo packs were pretty much impossible to search like wax packs are, where they could be resealed. We'll take a look at those in a second. And there are some notable rookie cards in this box, which we'll be talking about as we pull them. Here's our first look at it. You can see they were 49 cents back in 1981. Oh, those are nice. Very nice. So pack number one is going to Connor C. It's going to be this one right here. You can see there are 28 picture cards with one stick of bubble gum somewhere in there and um so you get about double what you would in a regular wax pack there's the back of it you can see that um not too much going on there just gives you the ingredients of the gum and also um gives you a little bit of info about opg you can see a little bit of gum residue in there so here we go connor c's got the first pack so connor you're up good luck on pack number one We're looking for uh, several rookie cards in here. Kurt Gibson, rookie card, would be a nice one. Um, there's a nice Mike Schmidt record breaker. Tim Raines, Hall of Famer. Also looking for Harold Baines, Fernando Valenzuela, uh, Jeff Reardon, John Tudor. Who else is in here? Mookie Wilson. Oh, there's Alan Trammell with a nice big... Uh, piece of gum sticking to him let me get that off of it wow that, wow that gum is just disintegrating it's just breaking um that's not a gum stain that's just trammell's shadow so the gum was in the middle of these packs alan trammell of course is a hall of famer you can see the design on these cards is pretty nice at first when i first started collecting i wasn't real crazy about this set of course i didn't really have too many of it but also you can see the cards in really nice shape the corners are very sharp so that's the first pack connor c gets a schmidt and an alan trammell put that off to the side i'll get those team bagged up for you next up it's john a pack number two you can see that residue in there of the gum john a is a big yankees fan all right, let's see here. We have um, Dan Petrie. We've got a future star rookie card there. Nobody that notable. Another one. No one that notable either. Johnny Bench record breaker. That's a nice looking card. We're looking for a Tim Raines future star card would be in this format. Um, that would be his rookie card. Also, Fernando Valenzuela. So we're getting lots of rookies. Mike Bodicker had a nice career. Lots of rookies for John A, but not the rookie. Here comes the gum. And it is... I wonder if I should eat this. I almost want to taste this. I don't, I don't know if I can't do it. My brother, who has a channel, The Pass is Alive, eats the gum all the time out of the packs. 
has some pretty interesting reactions. There's a nice George Brett AL All-Star card. George Brett. Eddie Murray, back-to-back -back Hall of Famers. Let's see who else we get in here. You can see there are some cards that are a little off-center from top to bottom, like this Vern Rule. By the way, here's the back of the card. I know a lot of you guys always like me to go over the backs and stuff. You can see nice red backs, um, complete pitching record on there, and a little extra info at the bottom. I like the backs of these cards. And that's it for... Pack number two for John. Put a sticky note on his stack. Next up, we got James. James S. Now, whenever you, I would buy these in the store, I would always look at the front and back trying to see who was on the top and bottom because obviously if it was a really good player, I would want to take that pack. So, pack number three of 24. By the way, a lot of you always ask, oh, that gum just slid right on out of there. A lot of you always ask, how do you get into your throwback Thursdays or your breaks? And I sell these on Patreon, uh, my Patreon page. If you want to look in the description, a link will be there. Also, um, I do put them on eBay if they don't sell it on Patreon, but usually they do. So far, we've got a bunch of commons, and there's a Mike Schmidt all-star card. Hall of Famer, like that one. Good old Mike Schmidt from the Phillies. Check out the back of that one. Still looking for the Harold Baines, Fernando Valenzuela, and Tim Raines rookie cards, and Kurt Gibson. Have not found it yet. Pack number four is going to Matt C. I think Matt's got back-to-back -back packs there. And your first one is Don Ace, who I'm sure a lot of us used to mispronounce his name wrong. Get that gum out of there. Sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. And it's... Now there it goes. All right. Pittsburgh Pirates team card with Chuck Tanner in the corner. Paul Mitchell. Here comes a future star card. Jerry Don Gleaton. He had a pretty decent career. Got a few of his cards. Another rookie card here, Gary Ward. Nice career. Got a bunch of his cards out in the garage in the commons box. Got to get this gum off of the Roy Howell. Ray Knight. Another nice career. Dusty Baker. Dusty Baker should still be managing right now. He took the Nationals to the playoffs a couple years ago. I think he won like 96 games. And they fired him. Brought in Davey Martinez. And they've stunk ever since. So... I hope Dusty gets another shot. I always like Dusty with his toothpick hanging out of his mouth. Seems like a good manager to me. And Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer with the Red Sox. Check out that do on Eck. And uh, Dennis Eckersley used to be a starter, and then he converted. You can see all throughout his career, all starter that converted to a closer and was a really lights-out closer. A couple pitchers have been able to do that. John Smoltz also comes to mind as a starter that turned to closer and then went back to starting and was dominant at both. Uh, Adam Wainwright did it for a little bit in his career. All right, pack number five. This one is also from Matt C. Let's get these turned around. See if we can find any of those rookie cards. Got some Hall of Famers and stuff, but so far no uh, Harold Baines or Tim Raines. Get into the gum section. Going to have a big stack of gum here soon. At least the gum is not sticking to the box. Don Sutton, that's a Hall of Famer. Lou Pinella, popular manager back in the day. Used to usually get pretty heated. Bucky Dent, or as uh, Red Sox fan call him, call him Bucky freaking Dent. Matt C, that's your pack. Now, Paul R, you're up next. Has pack number six, and there's 24 packs in the box. We're about a quarter of the way done. Let's see who we get in here. Um, Jim Cott, just short of the Hall of Fame. Luis Salazar, Pete McCannon. There's the gum. Hoping it's not on a Harold Baines or um, Tim Raines or Kurt Gibson, and it's not. Davy Lopez. Lopes. 
Um, and still no rookie card. Milt May, former Pirate. That's six down. Next pack, number seven. We can kind of see what's coming up here on this next um, round. I see Steve Carlton there coming up in about six packs. Got a Steve Trout on the back of this particular pack. Got a rookie card there, but nobody really notable. There is a stolen base leader, Ricky Henderson. A Ricky Henderson second year card is in this set. Always like that card a lot. Ricky's just kind of standing there with his hat off looking at the camera. Here's a Reggie Jackson and Mike Schmidt leaders card. And it looks like here comes the gum. Let's get ready for that. Oh, it's sticking to Bob Walk. I believe that's a Bob Walk rookie card. He is the Pirates color analyst. He came up with the Phillies and uh, won a World Series with them, actually. So he has a World Series under his belt, Bob Welch. Former Cy Young Award winner. And let's see if there's any big hits in there. Nope. No Hall of Famers for James S. in that particular pack. So let's go on to the next one. Sean T. Manny Sanguian's on the back. Another pirate. Um, great. Willie Wilson. Luis Pujols, no relation to Albert, I don't think. There's a Rusty Koontz, um, former Pirates base coach, also kind of a strange name. Robin Yount. Robin Yount's a Hall of Famer, and he's got a big stick of gum on his face. Let's see if we can get it off without causing any paper loss. Always got to be careful because we could possibly preserve the card. Because the gum is not really damaging the fronts of it. You can see sometimes we'll get a, like a little raised um, texture on the card from the gum. But it looks like this one came through pretty pretty well. Came out the other side okay. Robin Yount, Hall of Famer. Like that one a lot. His rookie card is in 75 with George Brett. So that's like his fifth year card. Rod Carew, All-Stars. This is a pretty good pack so far. A couple All-Stars. Looking for a Harold Baines with the... Same border, green border. Still haven't found it yet, Manny Sanguin. Also, uh, Fernando Valenzuela, Mike Sosha. They're on the same card together. Pack number nine for James S. See what we get in this one. That, that's uh, These future stars, Tops is pretty bad at predicting the future because most of their future star picks um barely even had a cup of coffee in the majors steve carlton hall of famer new york yankees team card here's the gum sticking to the back of this one comes right off though that's nice doyle alexander lonnie smith carl yastrzemski hall of famer it's a nice card good old carl yastrzemski nice long career check him out that wasn't a sound effect that I added to the video. One of my kids' toys just made a weird splashing sound. I don't know what that was all about. Phil Necro, another Hall of Famer. And that pack is in the books for James. Next up, we have pack number 10 for Justin. Looks like you got a Ron Pruitt on the top. And on the back. Uh, it's always fun looking at these, trying to figure out who the back player was. Can't really tell. Bobby Brown. Okay, Ken Brett, George's brother, Fergie Jenkins, nice Hall of Famer, got a big chew in there, Denny Walling, there it is, that's one of the ones we were looking for, Fernando Valenzuela and Mike Sosha rookie card, I think this, um, this is, I don't know, probably one of the top, I'd say top three cards in the set, uh, Kirk Gibson is a nice one, Harold Baines and the Fernando Valenzuela rookie card. So we finally got our first, uh, I don't know if I'd call this a chase card or not, but our first one that I've been looking for. Looking for the Reigns, Gibson, Baines, and Mike Sosha. Of course, Valenzuela never made the Hall of Fame, but his career started out on fire. Uh, Fernando Mania was sweeping across baseball when he first came up and um, still had a very nice career. And Mike Sosha also had a nice uh, career. 
and uh, went on to be an established manager for many years with the Angels until recently, of course. So that's a nice one, Fernando Valenzuela. Whenever I see that card, I pick it up. I just bought it at the flea market, in fact, about a week ago for, I think I got it for like, I don't know, 50 cents or a quarter. Not a bad deal at all. Bill Buckner. And let's see if you get another one in here. Another good one. Chet Lemon. Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith, third year card. Ozzie Smith, rookie card is 79 tops. I'm really trying to get a box of 79 tops eventually. There's just so much because I do believe the Ozzie Smith rookie card graded out at a PSA 10 is sold for $38,000. So a lot of people are trying, you know, their luck in buying boxes and trying to pull Smith's rookie cards and send them off because PSA 10s are tough to come by for 79 tops, especially because the centering is so tough in 79 tops. If you ever seen like a Nazi Smith rookie card, it's likely been off center from top to bottom or left to right. So that's a nice one. Ozzy Smith, third year card, like that one a lot. So that was a pretty good pack for Justin. And now we have Terrence with pack number 11. Get this wrapper out of the way. And you got an Orioles team card in there. John Tudor, that's his rookie card. John Tudor also had a pretty good career. I mostly remember him for his time with the Cardinals. Ozzie Smith, record breaker, most assists by a shortstop in a season. He definitely had the range where he was able to get to the ball and throw guys out. It's a nice one. Here comes the gum. And it's on a Pedro Guerrero card. So you get a little bit of a, looks like almost like a mold spot there. That's why I'm always a little hesitant to eat uh, the gum. I think this might be Guerrero's rookie card. Another guy who had a nice career, Mike Scott. It's a good one. Clint Hurdle. Mike Tyson. Not the Mike Tyson that you're all thinking of, though. Dave Kingman. Richie Hebner. And that's it for that pack for Terrence. We're about halfway through the box, getting to pack number 12 here, which is the midway point. And that one's going to Tim M. So you got a Ken Brett on the top, and I don't know on the bottom, just I know that he hit um, grand slammers in two straight games. So it's obviously a batter, and it's a Pirates player. Judging off those stats, you might be able to figure it out. Phil Garner, scrap iron. So let's get these cards turned around and see what we got here. Bergie Jenkins again. That's the second time we've seen that card. Um, another Fernando Valenzuela. Fernando Mania. Fernando and Mike Sosha. This was a hot card back in the day. In fact, I I wish I would have uh, had my original Beckett on hand. I, there we go. I'm just going to take a second. I have the original Beckett from 1984. The very first ever issue. I just want to keep the video rolling in one uh, full swoop. I don't want to do any editing. That Fernando Valenzuela card was worth two fifty dollars uh, back in 1984. Just kind of curious about that. I'm sure it went up even a little more. Um, of course, 84 cards, the card industry wasn't like booming like it was in the late 80s, but you can see that that was the most valuable card in 1984. The second most valuable card was Tim Raines at $2. Uh, so this is a pretty cool thing. The original Beckett monthly magazine from November of 84. A must have if you like Beckett magazines. So just thought I'd throw that in there really quick. All right, let's go through the rest of these for Tim. Got a Gary Matthews there. Willie Wilson. Tony Perez, another Hall of Famer. Rick Russell and Phil Garner on the back. So that's Tim's pack in the books. We got a Steve Carlton I could see coming up. For Dustin L. So Steve Carlton, Hall of Famer. It's a leader's card. We got another Hall of Famer right after that. You can see Raleigh Fingers down there. The nice mustache. All right. So pretty nice for getting some Valenzuelas. I would like to see some Harold Baines coming out of here. Harold Baines didn't have much value to his cards until recently when he made the Hall of Fame. He used to be able to buy that Harold Baines. Literally, I've picked up the Harold Baines rookie card before he made the Hall of Fame in 10 cent boxes. Um, of course, now you're gonna pay a bunch more for it. 
If you're lucky, you can maybe get it for a couple bucks. Mike Schmidt All-Star card again. And Pedro Guerrero, Mike Scott, Clint Hurdle. So we saw that same order in a previous pack. That's the way it goes with Topps cards from this era. Pack number 14 for Jeffrey. On top, got a Bob Molinaro and seen some of these already. Fergie Jenkins again for the third time. Lots of Fergies in here. Now we get to the middle cards here. Max Venable. And then a Jim Dwyer. And this card is messed up. It's all wrinkled up. So I don't know if that's a factory thing or what. Maybe it got jammed in the processor. Pretty strange that that was upside down and uh, messed up. I have pulled cards um, from sealed cases that have had certain issues uh, with like creases and stuff before. But I don't know if that one got jammed. It's not really creased on the back, but on the front it took a beating. Um, anytime you see something like that, the bells and whistles start going off. Like, oh, the box is searched. It's searched. But this has been authenticated by the Baseball Card Exchange, and I trust them very much. And um, I think that's just probably a quality control issue. If this box was indeed, if it had been searched, those Valenzuelas likely would not be in there. Because like uh, I stated, and you can even check it out in any of your old Beckett's, that was the chase card back in the day. So, next pack. This, by the way, is for Eric P., Eric Rasmussen takes the gum hit on that one. Kind of stinks they had to throw the gum right in the middle of the pack. So two cards could possibly be damaged. There's a Goose Gossage Hall of Famer. All-star card. Luckily, these cards um, seem to have been kept in very a very nice dry area because the, uh, the gum has not taken on any moisture whatsoever. When it takes on moisture, it usually passes that moisture onto the card and leaves a nice big stain. But not seeing any stains, this one, by the way, is for Aaron W., pack number 16. There's a Vance Law. Also, you can see there's an issue with this card. The corner is wrinkled. Uh, you can see it's it's dinged. Also, the corner is cut strained. So another this is a factory defect. You can see it kind of goes up at an angle there, a slight angle. Um, almost like a jagged edge on that one. Another obvious cutting error. Something happened with the machine and uh, got by Topps Quality Control. You can see the corner there. It looks like a card that I tried to cut out myself from a box bottom. You know how Topps used to put the cards on the bottoms of the boxes and we would cut them out with scissors and do our best to make them be the right shape, but they never quite looked right. There's a uh, Future Star card for the Angels. And I see a Reggie Jackson coming up. Reggie Jackson All-Star card. It's a nice one. Check them out on the back. Card number 400. Tops, by the way, would always kind of pay homage to the best players by giving them a an even triple-digit number, like 100, 200, 300, 400. Those were usually the best players. So card number 400 goes to Reggie. Still haven't seen the Harold Baines yet. And um, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer, it looks like. So pack 16 is in the books. That takes us now to pack number 17 for Brian M. Let's see who you get in this one. 1981 tops. Get a future star card there of some Cubs future stars. None of the guys really turned out. Also a Giants future star card again. Three misses. Johnny Bench, record breaker. Padres, future stars. And also Orioles, future stars. Again, Mike Boddicker was okay. All right, let's get this gum out of the way. See, uh, looks like it's Don Money taking the gum stain, but not really. It's not even really gum stain. It's a little tiny um, blemish there. Ozzie Smith again, like that one a lot. Reggie Jackson, pretty good pack with those two in there. Dave Steeb, Larry Boa, Hal McRae. 
his son Brian McRae played in the majors and Brian M bought that pack. So pretty cool. What the heck was it that again I did not add that sound effect. It's one of my kids' toys that's making sounds and uh kind of creeping me out. All right, Tim M is up. Pack number 18 of 24. Let's see who Tim M gets in his pack. Hopefully you get one of those rookie cards. It's always fun just to uh, open these up. And we have another factory defect card that I can see. It is the Pirates rookie card. If you take a close look at this, this corner has an issue. It's a little bit um, bent and also, again, miscut at the top. It kind of goes up a little bit. It's not a uh, it's not a clean cut corner. You can see I don't know if that helps you see the difference between the two corners. This one's a ninety degree corner and perfect. This one is not so interesting. Jim caught. Let's see if uh, what else we got going on in here. Here comes the gum sticking to the back of the Chicago Cubs card. And um, these two are sticking together a little bit too. Ed Farmer. And that's it for that one. Pack number 18, 19. Aaron W, he had pack 16. And he's back for another go at this. 1981 Tops Throwback Thursday. By the way, um, a box of cello packs cost about $400, an authenticated box. Um, I think a wax box usually sells for like 350 or so, somewhere in there. All right, Raleigh Fingers is on the top of this. And uh, Baseball Card Exchange definitely has a nice business. If you look up their prices, um, they buy they buy these for 200 and then they can sell them for three, $350, dollars $400. A lot of people look at their prices and think that's their sale prices, um, but the two hundred dollars is what they pay for a box of unopened eighty-one cello. And then they got to make their profit because they are a business. The next card here is a Jim Spencer, and we get our first Dave Winfield card, like Dave Winfield. His rookie card is seventy-four tops. Solid career, Hall of Famer. Let's write out Steve Carlton. Another Hall of Famer All-Star card, and it's miscut. Off-center badly from top to bottom. And that's it for that pack. So Aaron's is in the book. Now we have only five packs left on this Throwback Thursday. Brian F. is up now. He has pack number 20. Danny Darwin's on the back. On the front, we have a Randy Neiman, former bullpen coach. I think he's with the Mets, I want to say. A few years ago, he threw me a ball down in Baltimore. Ozzie Smith, record breaker. It's the second time we've pulled that card. That's our first checklist. Still haven't pulled a John Watham card yet. Dale Murphy, a little bit miscut there from top to bottom. There it is, Kirk Gibson rookie card. We're looking for that one. Um, I know a lot of you hate Beckett prices because Beckett is really unreliable, but this is, uh, I guess, the second most valuable card according to the Beckett Almanac. At eight dollars, I've seen this card go for as little as a dollar or two, though. But still, really nice to get a Kurt Gibson rookie card. He is not a Hall of Famer, but he does have one of the most famous hits of all time: 1988 Game One of the World Series. He battled Dennis Eckersley, and he ended up hitting a home run despite being um, extremely injured, with uh, two bad knees and everything. Could barely even run around the bases. Uh, one of the greatest uh, at bats that I've ever seen. If you haven't seen that. Um, home run yet look up Kurt Gibson home run world series 1988 and check it out it's a really really awesome um, highlight so Kurt Gibson rookie card very very nice former pirate player also by the way all right so we got the Kurt Gibson rookie card so we got everybody that I was looking for except um, Tim Raines we still haven't seen yet we got a couple Valenzuela's and um, also Harold Baines. So we only have four packs left, and it's going to be up to Darren C. Darren took the last four packs, so he has all of these. So let's see if Darren has the last pack magic to find that Baines or the Tim Raines. He's got all 
21, 22, 23, and 24. All right, so we have the Texas Rangers team card in this pack with Don Zimmer as the manager on the front. Let's get down to it. The last uh, 100-plus cards, 28 cards per pack. Pete Rose, record breaker. It's a nice one. Steve Carlton. Already seen that one, so we're likely going to see a couple repeats after him. There's a Yankees Future Stars card. And now we have... Um, get this gum out of the way. Craig Reynolds, Jack Clark. Harold Baines, there it is. That's one of the ones I just was talking about. Harold Baines rookie card. So Darren comes through and... We found three out of the four top rookie cards. We still need to find the Tim Raines, but three out of four is at bat. Harold Baines rookie card, uh, new Hall of Famer. Uh, check this one out. Uh, good job to Darren by picking the last four packs. Very, very nice card there. Harold Baines, a rookie. And let's check out the rest of these. We've got a Kiko Garcia winking at the camera there. And uh, that's it for that pack. Three more packs left to go. Pack number 22. Let's see what we get here. This one almost looked like it was some sort of parallel with a blue border, but it's just grossly off-center. We have Rusty Staub off-center. And there's, let's get the gum out of the way. Daryl Jackson, Duffy Dyer, Bobby Mercer, Barry Evans, Joe Price, Milt May, Steve Kemp. And that's it for that one. So only two packs left on this Throwback Thursday. And Darren's got them both. Let's hopefully we can find that Tim Raines. Get this wrapper off me. It's kind of like sticking to me a little bit there. A little bit of static cling. Mike Schmidt, record breaker. Phillies win their first World Series. Uh, I just mentioned Bob Walk won a World Series with them. 1980, they won the World Series. That was the year I was born. So when this set came out, I was just a little baby, only a couple months old. Of course, I never bought any of these packs. In fact, these are the first packs I've ever opened of 81 that I know of. Bruce Suter, Hall of Famer. Willie Stargell, Hall of Famer. That's a nice card. And that's it for that pack. We're down to our last one for Darren and also for the entire box. I hope you guys like this Throwback Thursday series. It's always fun going way back to the uh, early 80s. And hopefully soon we'll be able to start going back to the 70s. Some of those 70s boxes are extremely expensive that I might have to even, if I do buy a box of them for several thousand dollars i might have to sell them by the card uh, obviously if you pull a pack fresh rookie card out of the 70s and get it graded it comes out to like a nine or ten you're gonna uh gonna realize a nice payday so anyway here's our last pack and we get a steve carlton card again seen that one a few times bucky dent George Foster, Joe Necro, Danny Goodwin, Robin Yount, except without the gum on his face this time, and Jerry Ramey is the last card. So that's it for this Throwback Thursday. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It was fun to open up all these old packs of 1981 tops. We found most of the rookie cards we were looking for, except for the Tim Raines. Also found... Um, a good bit of all the Hall of Famers in there, such as like Willie Stargell, Reggie Jackson, Pete Rose, um, Ozzy Smith. Uh, lots of good stuff in there. So um, you might see this box before. I think they reused this same box design for a few different cello um, cases back then. Kind of like how they do for the rat cases, like in, I think, like 8045, 86. They all kind of look very similar, same exact design. So... A uh, really nice break. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that participated. I'm going to take this gum and probably just throw it in the trash can, clean things up, get these all team bagged up and sleeved up for all the uh, rookie cards. And um, if you could, please hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of 1981 Tops. 
and I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody.